Hello, welcome to January 2022 episode of Curiosity the Science Show. Happy New Year. This is episode number 27th of uh, Curiosity presented by Young Academy of India. So uh, first we will see what are the, the happenings in the last month that is in the December of 2021, the last month, right? So the biggest breakthrough in the science is the James Webb telescope, right? It has been successfully blasted off from uh, a place called French Guiana. Most of the NASA's, uh, you know, space exploration saw uh, launch pad is the rocket launch site is uh, French Guiana. It's under the administrative uh, uh, territory of the French government, right? It's a very small uh, country just next to Suriname. And of course, Suriname is also a small country in between Guyana and French Guiana, right? That is actually in the north of the southern uh, South America, South America's north part, just north of Brazil. That is where uh, this launch is just like our Sri Hari Kota, right? And James Webb, we have already seen that in the last episode of the Curiosity, James Webb is the most advanced space telescope ever. You know, and uh, the name, uh, we have already discussed the controversies about that name, J the James Webb. He was, uh, uh, you know, a military officer and um, yeah, the, with a mixed legacy, a lot of controversies because the name James Webb might not be appropriate. But again, at last, the, the NASA decided to go ahead with the James Webb as the name of this new uh, telescope uh, you know so uh, just uh, the successor of the Hubble Space Telescope right and he was an officer instrumental in um, Apollo mission right the moon landing Apollo mission Apollo 11 mission so that is the reason why NASA decided to have his name in, uh, for this new telescope uh, at the same time the mixed legacy because he was a uh, uh, you know vocal homophobic right uh, person in in the US uh, US military so uh, you know it is it's uh, the the orbit of this James Webb telescope is almost 1.5 million kilometers from earth almost four times uh, you know the uh, the distance between earth and moon so it's it's not even orbiting earth unlike even moon you know moon is orbiting earth right James Webb telescope is orbiting Sun so it's something like a planet you know so it's uh, the orbit is something called l2 orbit uh, 1.5 billion kilometers uh, from earth surface at the same time you see the moon is only 15 lakh kilometer from the earth right and uh, uh, yeah so the moon is basically uh, you know 3.8 lakh while if you speak in lakhs 3.8 lakh at the same time this james webb is 15 lakh kilometer that is 1.5 million 15 lakh kilometers at the same time, the Hubble tel Space Telescope was only 570 kilometers. So it is really far away, you know, four times the distance, right? And uh, what this uh, telescope is used for? For looking the afterglow of the Big Bang. So it's basically working at the infrared and it's mostly on the spectroscopic measurements, not really the, the image, not the uh, photo, photon based images the Hubble is known for isn't it at the same time it's also capable of producing the image but mostly we are looking at you know the spectroscopic measurements of this afterglow of the Big Bang so it's really basic questions this telescope is trying to answer and it's not even looking for the the life on other planets you know so NASA has a new mission for that uh, new telescope only for looking at the you know the life on other planets right <coughs> and uh, yes it's you know it deploys like a flower or a butterfly it depends on your imagination it's it's really massive and once it's completely deployed it's something like a, a three tennis court you know it's really massive you know it's almost uh, 100 times more powerful than Hubble and six times more massive than Hubble you know and also if you look at the the telescope it's very interesting one side is super hot around 80 centigrade uh, you know the Celsius at the same the other side is you know minus 200 degrees Celsius so two sides of the uh, this uh, particular telescope is starkingly in contrast you know it's very interesting isn't it so we have also seen in the last month that that is in the December of 2021 one web uh, that is a London based private venture with 36 satellites together blasted off from Kazakhstan you know so uh, it has got 648 satellite the one web it's a private venture uh, to give uh, you know anonymous internet access to the private sector 
you know so just basically something called web3 isn't it everyone is talking about web3 it is completely anonymous so the privacy is guaranteed in web3 not like web2 uh, where you know the the surveillance missionary can look at what your your interactivity can be traced right but web3 is completely anonymous so that is why web3 has got mixed uh, legality in different countries you know so the goal of this one web is the internet services to everyone everywhere you know so at the same time it's a uh, uh, similar venture by spacex is called starlink uh, which has well over 1700 satellites uh, in its constellation in uh, low earth orbit also called leo isn't it but again in, here in india the government has recently made a statement that it warned against uh, the citizen using that particular uh, uh, you know services of this uh, uh, you know this uh, star link as well as the one web though one web is mostly for the arctic region right but star link is for everywhere in the world right and in india we have now two new covid 19 vaccines uh, one is serum institute of india sii the same place where the covid shield is being manufactured right their new vaccine is called covovax uh, and uh, the biological e that is a new company based in hyderabad i guess their new vaccine is called corbivax and both of these vaccines are protein subunit vaccines and the protein which they are actually re uh, making in the yeast you know covax is the they are using the yeast as the recombinant missionary you know expression system and uh, they, the, the, the protein that they are expressing in the yeast is rbd that is receptor binding domain you know and uh, also we have a new drug against uh, covid 19 approved here for the emergency use is called molnupiravir you know so it is basically a ribonucleoside and it incorporates widespread replication errors for the enzyme called rna directed rna polymerase remember this enzyme is really important for rna viruses like uh, hiv virus or the sars cov2 you know so this and this particular drug in in one sense it inactivates that crucial enzyme used by these and this uh, viruses for its replication and uh, in the u.s pfizer uh, in the europe european union right as well as in the u.s uh, pfizer pill uh, you know they, they have uh, released a new pill called paxlovid so this is uh, at home use emergency use covid 19 uh, drug which has recently been approved by us fda so how does this work so this is basically 3 cl protease inhibitor this drug paxlovid you know so it cleaves the viral protease involved in the viral replication so it's quite similar to the drug that we got in here in india so it actually interferes with viral replication virus means sars cov2 viral the replication will be hampered you know and uh, finally in the news from the last week uh, last month we have uh, scientists discover more than 70 rogue exoplanets in our own galaxy milky way and what is this rogue planets means rog means they are not really orbiting around any known star unlike earth so you know the earth is a planet which we are orbiting around sun right but there are certain planets in our solar system which are rock planets which are not orbiting around any known star system these are called rock planets so it's amazing discovery right 70 uh, new planets at one go but Remember, it, it took almost 20 years of analyzing and reanalyzing the data, uh, you know, for the scientists to publish their crucial work in Nature Astronomy. So the paper published in the last month. So what are the other discoveries of the last month? You know, so scientists have created and observed a new phase of matter, popularly known as the time crystal. That's very interesting story, you know. So it has published in Nature. Team of scientists detailed the creation of a time crystal using Google's Sycamore quantum computing software. So it is basically based on this AI, uh, you know, the AI enabled discovery of the state of matter. Very interesting, right? Next is black holes swallow the neutron star in a single bite. That is what the new research says. Uh, the neutron star can be swallowed by the black hole. Black holes swallow everything, isn't it? But just in one go, the neutron stars get swallowed for the first time scientists have uh, without a doubt observed 
not one but two collisions between black holes and neutron stars. These two separate mergers occurred 10 days apart in January 2020. Exciting, isn't it? And next is Arctic could see more rain than snow by 2050. So within next 30 years, the Arctic, so you know, it's of course is a dry place, isn't it? So only snows, it doesn't rain, just like in the case of Antarctic. But over there, uh, episodes of rain are getting frequent because of the climate change. But by 2050, the rain will, uh, you know, uh, it will outcompete the snowfall in the Arctic region. It's really alarming. That will accelerate the, the snow melting at the Arctic, uh, you know, very, very uh, doomsday prediction, isn't it? So scientists identify accelerated aging in the frogs associated with warmer temperatures, which could speed up amphibian extinction due to the climate change. So because of the global warming, the planet is warming up. And because of that, frogs and other amphibians are, the aging is getting accelerated. And um, yeah, so it is quite interestingly, uh, maybe the similar patterns you can see across the animal world as well, you know. So if you happen to live in a colder place, maybe aging is slowed down, right? And if you are in a warmer place, the aging is faster, uh, fastened. Maybe because of the faster rates of metabolism, you know, when you when it gets warmed up, and also yeah, this this shows the repercussion of the global warming, which uh, uh, honestly I haven't thought of it, you know. So as the globe warms up, you get aged faster, you know. Very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, alarming too. Next story is that uh, the feeding the pet dogs just once a day might keep them healthier as they age. So. If you happen to own a pet dog or even pet cat, I would say, if you feed just once in a day, so that is one good trick to extend their age as well as to make them healthier when they age, you know. And another invention happened the last month is uh, the Japanese university professors, uh, they invented something called a TV screen which you can taste it. You know, so of course the TV screen uh, until now it's only for multimedia communication, right? Multimedia means audio visual. But how about taste sensation? How about smell sensation or factory? Though it is not smell but taste. You can touch, you can you can lick on the device a gadget to get the taste. You know, uh, so whatever the taste that, uh, for example, how does a cake? A taste like the end result of a cake you can just uh, lick it to see it very interesting right only it's a prototype but very interesting I, I would say then dietary fiber is better for immunity than probiotics that is what uh, the latest uh, research paper published last month says dietary fiber is better than probiotics very interesting isn't it and women are more likely to feel too cold at the office and more likely to report that the office temperature is impacting their performance at work. So it might be something to do with, uh, you know, the gender, right? Uh, uh, how men's and women body respond uh, differently in response to changed environment, you know, or metabolic rates as well, right? <coughs> Very interesting. And next story is the analysis of microplastics in human feces revealed a correlation between fecal microplastics and inflammatory bowel disease status. So microplastic congestion lead to inflammatory bowel disease. It's a, the revelation, you know, uh, nobody actually uh, found this kind of association before this crucial and uh, landmark study published last month. Next is eye tracking studies suggest that the people with social anxiety not only avoid looking at the strangers but also their surroundings you know so if you are avoidant type of personality you're an introvert you know so if you have social anxiety then you don't even look at the other person's faces uh, the uh, you know faces and eyes but also around your surroundings so it will have more impact on your behavior isn't it so very interesting and final story from the last month is that gut microbiome modulates weight gain after smoking cessation mice. So it's a mice study, but uh, it could be same in the human beings too. You might have observed it, right? After smoking cessation, that means once, uh, uh, you know, a person quits smoking, chances are high that this, the person uh, will accumulate the weight, you know? So the reason is that 
the gut microbiome is changing so there is a way to treat this problem you know so you can just introduce more uh, gut microbiome uh, in order for maintaining the healthy weight exciting isn't it so we have the facebook group do please check out the group so we uh, the moderators of our group uh, frequently post new new findings right just check it out now coming to observance as a general observance of january 2022 4th of january is world braille day for the blind people isn't the braille very very important and to ensure the accessibility in the workplace the braille is very important isn't it 24th is education day international education day 27th is uh, international day for commemoration of the memory of holocaust you know the, those uh, yeah terrifying scenes of holocaust i still remember when i visited the museum called uh, the museum of terror the topography of terror in berlin you know the 27th is a holocaust memorial day only three observances so the the by by and far january is having the least number of UN observances in a year you know now coming to astronomy related observance all these are binocular events and uh, as usual i suggest sky view app uh, if you really want to check it out all these uh, things you know if you don't know where to spot for example on third we have quadranted meteor shower now, if you have no idea where to look for just open the sky view app it will ask you to point your smartphone to a certain direction where you can check it out and if you have binocular you can watch it much more better right so third is quadranted meteor shower fourth is a very important day on earth's orbital this is called perihelion perihelion is the earth is the nearest the closest to the sun remember the the orbital of the earth around sun is ellipsoidal right so in ellipse there is a there is a point of the closest point that is called perihelion while furthest point is called apohelion you know that that falls in july and perihelion we are really near to the sun but still it's one of the, one of the coldest day right and the reason is that it's the cold or warm the season of the earth has nothing to do with uh, the position of the sun you know it is more to do with uh, the axial tilt so right now we are the northern hemisphere is facing away from the sun southern hemisphere is facing towards the sun that is why it's summer in south it's winter here in the north right so yeah sixth is moon jupiter conjunction so on same photograph you can get both moon and jupiter on sixth tenth is a good day to watch mercury right and 18th is wolf moon the full moon in january is called wolf moon according to the almanac of the indigenous people in the us right and 19th is another meteor shower is called Ursae Minorid meteor shower and finally on 29th we have moon Mars conjunction you can see both moons and Mars very close by so it's an excellent day for space watching and for January 2022 opportunities includes think Swiss research scholarship if you are interested to do PhD in Switzerland there are so many scholarships available links are in the show notes okay please check it out think swiss scholarship deadline falls on this month uh, the january 2022 and if you are a postdoc abroad and if you want to come back here uh, in india for opportunities as a young scientist you know for a faculty you can apply for ramalinga sami re-entry fellowship again deadline falls in january 2022 Young Scientist Summer Program in Austria, the call is open now, 15th of Jan is the deadline, right? So if you're interested, you can apply. If provided you are a PhD student, the first year and second year PhD students here in India can apply for this uh, summer program in Austria, in person. You can go to Austria, in Vienna. And ICGB workshop and so many opportunities are there. Please check the link in the show notes. And as usual, the FB page lists a lot more exciting, curiosity-driven research news, right? So check out our FB page as well as the stories featured in this episode. Everything you can get the links in the show notes. So do check it out. So happy new year once again. And I hope all of you will have very productive, curiosity-driven new year 2022, a healthy new year too. Thank you for watching.